Look at this. It's a photo of a briefing note for what Joe Biden apparently intends to do on his very first day in office. It's a symbolic day. The whole first week is symbolic, actually. You might recall that when Trump was in his first week, he ripped up the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade deal. He gave the green light to various oil and gas projects, pipelines mainly, including the Keystone XL pipeline. Well, no surprise, Biden is reversing so many signature symbolic Trump initiatives, at least the ones he thinks he can do without Congress's approval. You see, a U.S. president can do a lot of things just through executive orders, and of course they can be undone in the same way. So look at that wording. Inauguration day and four crises. They're telling you that there are four emergencies going on. They want you in a perpetual state of panic and crisis. They want a permanent state of emergency, so they continue operating in an extreme manner that would not otherwise be tolerated by Americans. It's what they're doing up here in Canada, too. So there, there is no climate crisis. And by the left's own measure, the pandemic lockdown has flattened oil and gas use and demand and emissions. But it's a crisis. Never let a crisis go to waste. So look at what is written there. Rejoin the Paris Agreement. Of course, uh, the Democrats love the United Nations and global warming scheme there, most of all. Announced date for U.S. hosted leaders climate summit. I can't tell you how excited Trudeau must be. He might even shave his beard and put down the bong and have a shower and straighten up before going down. He's got his mojo back. He's outlasted Trump. And third, roll back Trump enviro actions via executive orders, including rescinding Keystone XL pipeline permit. And why not? Obama killed it with a word. Trump revived it with a word. Now Biden seeks to kill it with a word. That pipeline was first proposed, I think, back in 2008, more than a dozen years ago. I wonder how it's going to work, though, given that the pipe already crosses the border. They built it. They finished that last spring. Here's a video of that moment. My name's Samantha Fernandez, and I'm the project manager for the Keystone XL border crossing pipeline. I think it is a huge achievement to have the opportunity to be able to build KXL. The day we crossed the border between US and Canada was a brutally cold day. It was probably nine degrees with 50 mile an hour winds. And it was a monumental time for everybody. It was really exciting time for both Barnard and TC Energy for us to be able to achieve that milestone. It was one of the most significant bores we've ever done in TC Energy's history. So I guess that's one difference between Obama's executive order nixing it and Trump's executive order reviving it. And now it's actually built. What would removing a permit look like? Are you going to ban oil from being put in it and crossing the border? I, I've got to think that a lot of people would reject that. Not just the company that would surely sue under the USMCA trade deal, but the unions building the pipeline and local politicians along the route. Democrat or Republican, the pipeline will be the largest property taxpayer in many of the counties through which it goes. Such a direct attack on U.S. energy independence, um, you know, it benefits OPEC. But then again, after China, the country most excited about Joe Biden winning is surely Iran. They've got lots of oil and they would like to sell it to America instead of Canadian oil going south. Here's the socialist Bernie Sanders celebrating. The Keystone Pipeline is and always has been a disaster. I'm delighted that Joe Biden will cancel the Keystone permit on his first day in office. With all the major crises facing America, we must never lose sight of the most existential threat facing our planet, climate change. Yeah, but they're just going to swap it out for Venezuelan oil. And they're a socialist dictatorship. Yes, yes, that's the point. Bernie Sanders probably prefers all oil uh, from OPEC countries. Major rival Russia, perhaps. As shocking and bizarre as it sounds, Bernie Sanders actually went on his honeymoon to the Soviet Union during the Cold War. I'm not talking about after the fall of the Berlin Wall. It was during the height of the Cold War, Bernie Sanders went to Russia for his honeymoon. He truly loved the Soviet Union. He participated in propaganda films. How about Justin Trudeau? Justin Trudeau claims he supports the pipeline, but I don't believe him. Remember, his right-hand man, Gerald Butts, said it wasn't about this route or that route. It's about getting off oil altogether. Here's Gerald Butts on the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Truth be told, we don't think there ought to be a carbon-based energy industry by the middle of this century. 
That's our policy in Canada, and it's our policy all over the world. You can choose to fight this fight on locking us into a high-carbon economy for five decades. Um, and I think that's a very reasonable uh, perspective to take. In fact, it's one we do take. Uh, so we don't think that, we think that the oil sands have been expanded too rapidly uh, uh, without a serious plan for environmental remediation in the first place. So that's why we don't think it's up to us to decide whether there should be another, another route for a pipeline. Because um, the real alternative is not an alternative route, it's an alternative economy. Butts and Trudeau killed off three Canadian pipeline alternatives, Northern Gateway, Energy East and Trans Mountain. The Keystone XL was the last one. Well, mission accomplished. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.